who would we be as Americans if, along with reading, writing, and arithmetic, we were also educated to be race literate? I was born in the land where the Middle Passage began. When Columbus sailed the ocean blue and he was headed back to Spain, from Quisqueya, also known as La Española, also known as the Dominican Republic in Haiti, he took with him gold, silver, fruits, vegetables, spices, and human cargo in the form of Tainos. The Tainos were an Arawak people living on that island, on Quisqueya, when he discovered it. It was an interesting journey for Columbus. Imagine sailing the dark waters of the ocean for months, looking for a way to India and landing on this. To say the least, the man was seriously lost. <laughs> When I was learning about slavery in the Dominican Republic, I remember being about seven years old. I was in Catholic school. And the stories literally made me sick to my stomach. The history books were filled with very unpleasant stories about slavery. And I remember feeling disconnected, feeling hurt, upset, and not knowing quite what to do with myself. I was about 10 years old when I came to the United States, and the stories that I learned about slavery were not that much different from what I had learned. No one ever told me that the people who were being kidnapped from the African continent, with the help of the Africans, were actually warriors that they were kings and queens, that they were basket weavers, astronomers, architects, that a lot of them were highly educated, that the first university in the world was the University of Timbuktu. It's very interesting, the things that we've left out of history and the difference that they make when we know them. America has an interesting history with immigrants and also with natives. The Native Americans were forcibly removed from their lands. Our government broke over 200 treaties with them. When the um, Italians and the Irish first started to arrive on our shores, they had a difficult time getting hired. Nina, was often seen not just in the advertising for jobs, but also in storefronts. Nina meant no Irish need apply. The Chinese were run after one town after another, and in some cases lynched after they helped to build the railroads. The Japanese were given just a few days to sell everything they had and were interned for years during the Second World War. We are a very interesting nation. The Jews have been attacked in one place and another. And the Mexicans have been discriminated against all over this nation. One of the things that is really interesting, or certainly was very interesting to me as I was learning about slavery was that what I was learning felt like oppression, even though I didn't have that language at the time, and tyranny. The other interesting thing was that I was the only dark-skinned child in that classroom when I was first learning about slavery in the Dominican Republic. And while I was absorbing and internalizing the tyranny and the oppression, my white classmates were receiving the same exact story but they were internalizing it from the perspective of superiority and supremacy, even though no one ever said that to them. The thing about being racially illiterate is that it blinds us to the various forms of oppression. While it's obvious 
how people of color are oppressed, it's not always so obvious and visible when oppression is hidden behind privilege and tucked under the loss of community, wealth, and power. So what do we do? How do we become more race literate? Well, you have to be curious. You have to start asking questions. You need to engage in conversations and take risks. And sometimes those risks are, you're gonna make mistakes. Ask for pardon, but don't stay silent. Silence is killing all of us. Race literacy is something that affects pretty much all of us because for the most part, we have been very misinformed about race. And those who are misinformed are bound to miscreate. So what is race literacy? Here's how I define it. And I had to come up with a definition because I didn't find one in any books that I read. So my definition is, Race literacy is the knowledge and awareness of the history of race, how one is acculturated into a racial caste, the systems in the nation state that support race as a human divide, and the impact of all of the above on our current events and individual lives. So what are the things that are impacted by race? Well, there's education. When we separate African American history, Native American history from American history, what we're saying is that those people didn't contribute. And so therefore, their history is not important and not worth telling. When we do that, the inference is that those people are not important. What about health care? Well, Race literacy could determine whether a healthcare provider will include intergenerational and historical trauma in creating a treatment plan for you. The Institute of Medicine did a research project that was actually, um, the members of Congress had asked for this in 1999. And what they found was that racial and ethnic disparities in healthcare exist. And because they're associated with worse outcomes, in many cases, are unacceptable. A healthcare provider will actually determine what they're going to say to you, how much information they will give you based on race, which is why the members of Congress asked for that study. The disparities exist. How about in organizations? Well, race affects hiring, firing, mentoring, company policies, and ultimately, the bottom line. In February of 2017, there was an article in the Washington Post and it read that Silicon Valley companies, companies that fail to diversify from management right on down, risk hurting their bottom line. We all know how diversity affects an organization. It makes the organization more innovative and it makes the organization much more open and able to receive more people of color. What about at the national level? How does race affect us there? Well, race determines who runs for office, who gets funded for running for office. It determines our laws and how those laws are made. In November of 2013, a report re released by the Alterum Institute and funded by the W.K. Kellogg Foundation informs us that minorities continue to suffer systemic discrimination that weaken the U.S. economy and that closing the earnings gap between whites and people of color would actually boost the economy by $1 trillion. So why become race literate? If we are serious about becoming racially awake, racially aware, and changing the culture of our country, then race literacy needs to be part of our educational system. Race literacy informs how we treat one another. 
It helps us to understand the past. And when we understand the past, we are able to understand the present. When we understand the present, we can get creative about how to be more equitable and create a more equitable society. How do we enhance our race literacy? We enhance our race literacy by reading more, asking more questions, engaging in conversations. We literally need to open ourselves up to new possibilities, creating new friendships, going to new and different places. But most of all, we need to become risk takers. It's absolutely worth it. Because when enough of us take our personal brick out of the wall of separation, the wall will crumble. And we can recycle those bricks to build a more equitable path. In closing, I want to say that race is not biology. There's only one human race, one human family. Genetically, we are all related. Cuz. <laughs> but the truth about racism is that racism is real and it affects all of us. I want to close by leaving you with two questions. Who would we be as Americans if all of us were educated to be race literate? And what can you do today on this very day to enhance your race literacy. Thank you.